the ninth chapter of the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 9. We'll begin reading with verse number 1. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down a stony. As we start this morning, we realize that we need to realize anyways that there had been a group of Israelites that had been released. Well, they had all been released from Babylonian captivity. Then some had chosen, a few had chosen, a remnant had chosen to come back to Jerusalem in hopes to rebuild the city of Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple. Nehemiah rebuilds the wall. And among those that had come back, Ezra receives a report that there were among the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites that had not separated themselves from the people they left, from the people of the lands that they had left. Our thought this morning, a holy separation. A holy separation. It was, whether it was intentional or not, there was an attempt being made to bring foreign influences into the land of Jerusalem, into uh, the city among the people. This morning, God has always held and desires for his people to be distinct, to be separate. And if you are going to be one of God's children, you are going to have to separate yourself from some things. Amen. Amen. There are some things that you definitely have to be a part of if you're going to be a child of God. There are definitely some things that you have to put on in order to be a child of God. But just as definite as there are some things that you have to put on, there are some things that you have to completely and entirely separate yourself from. Amen. There's two things I wanted you to see here. Amen. First of all, they have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. That's number one. They have not separated. There's some attachment still. There's still an attachment to where they were, to where they came from. And brother, it doesn't matter if you've come out of sin, amen, fresh out the world, or you've left false religion, amen, brother, you're going to have to lose the attachment, amen, the, to those things. There might be some things that were near and dear. We're talking about people's wives here. They had built families with these folks. These were things that were near and dear, close to them. And he said, listen, the people have not separated themselves. Amen, brother. What I'm telling you this morning is that if you're going to live a holy life, it's going to get real close to home. It's going to get close to what matters to you. And you have got to decide what matters to me. What matters? Does my wife my children, my relatives, my parents, my cousins, my friends, amen, who I was, my identity, amen, does that matter more to me than being holy? People, they had not separated themselves from the people. First of all, people carry influence. And brother, there's nothing more dangerous than influence. Amen, people influence you, whether you realize it or not. People have a great effect on other people. 
And there were some people here that they were attached to, and it affected their actions. Rest assured tonight, whatever you're influenced by, whatever spirit you're influenced by, whatever person you're influenced by, it will affect your actions. There is no action taken that is not prompted by something. Not any action of any consequence. Amen. Amen. Listen. Amen. Spirits, amen, influence people to do exactly what they do. It's almost becoming a lost concept around the church today that people are influenced by spirits. People almost don't even believe in spirits anymore. But brothers, listen to me. This morning, everyone in this building, we are actuated by a spirit. Come on. We are being motivated. We are being prompted by a spirit this morning. It's either the Holy Spirit or some other spirit, but you're being motivated by one. And the other thing you need to understand this morning is that people have spirits. They have a spirit that they're motivated by, and that spirit has an effect on other people and their spirit. Brother, that's why there needed to be a separation. There are these wives that are among the Hittites, the Amorites, the Egyptians, and they're going to have an influence on you that is going to turn your heart just like Solomon, just like Solomon. Those women, those foreign elements, those foreign women turned his heart away from God. Amen. The next thing he said was doing, they're doing according so they weren't just because they have not separated themselves they're under that influence they're doing according to their abominations amen, amen. if you're going to be saved this morning and i believe you're here this morning you're interested in your soul amen. If you're tuning in this morning it's hopefully because you're interested in your soul you're not just one of the critics amen but listen amen if you're going to be saved there are people and actions from which you're going to have to separate yourself. Amen. I'm saying there's some things you can't do and be saved. Amen. There's some things you can't be attached to. There are some rules. Amen. I know people today, they don't like that kind of preaching. It's not about rules, Brother Nathan. It's not about rules. But Jesus said it was. Jesus said, if you love me, You'll keep my commandments. If I, if I command my daughter to do something, it's not optional. Go clean your room. Amen. And sometimes you've got to teach your children that it's not optional. Right? Amen. You're going to do it. Amen. It's a command. There are some things that God commands. And if you're going to be saved, you're going to do it. There are some things God's going to say, don't touch. And if you're going to be saved, you're not going to touch it. Amen. What was Adam and Eve given way back in the garden? A command. A command. Don't eat of the fruit of this tree. Amen. They violated that command and there were consequences. And brother, any time we violate the commandment of God, there are consequences. Amen. There are consequences. Amen. And brother, when you don't separate yourself, amen, from the things that God requires you to separate yourself from, there will be consequences. You are free this morning to choose to do whatever you want to do, but you are not free this morning from the consequences that those choices entail. Amen. You will not act like the world. And yes, I'm going to keep preaching against the world. So this, amen, brother, listen. If there's two things I was thinking about this morning, amen, I was meditating a little bit this morning. I thought about the way, the journey that God has brought me on over these last 10, 15 years. And one of the first things God moved on my soul, burdened my soul with, was the amount of worldliness in the church among the professed people of God, a people that are supposed to be separate and distinct. Just how much the world has influence over us. That was the, probably the first thing 
that really begin to stir me, that begin to bother me, amen, cause me to make some real adjustments in my life. Uh, brother, I saw things that were bedrock. Uh, I saw things that people had convictions about, brother, that they would never, but little by little, more and more homes, more and more families, more and more pe pe people you looked up to as pillars. It was, in, it was infiltrating their home. And then, brother, this one, amen, they were letting down over here. Then their children were going there. Their children were doing this. And, brother, it gets to a point where you can't even hardly tell where the church is anymore. Amen. Because it ain't got no power. There's no separation. There's no distinction. And it gets to the point where rank sin will come right into the midst, brother, and nobody will blush anymore. Brother, when you let a little leaven in, it will leaven the whole lump. Amen, one brother said, and I'll say it again, a little devil will devil the whole dump, brother. Amen, and that's just what's happening in many places today, brother. They let a little bit in, and brother, when you let it in, you'll never get it out. You'll never get it out. Amen, brother, they'll let the jewelry in, they'll let the TV in, brother, they'll let all these things in. And brother, I'll tell you what goes, the power of God goes, and it never comes back. Hey, brother Nathan, why don't you loosen up on this and where's this and where's that? Brother, let me tell you something. When people compromise, amen, the word, principles of the word of God, I've seen it every, I mean every, every single time they lose the power of God. They don't get more anointing. They don't get more healings. They don't get more power. Brother, little by little, until there are congregations that have gone into oblivion tonight. And this morning, they don't even exist this morning. Because God requires a holy separation. God requires a holy separation. Amen. Brother, you will not act like the world and be God's child. No, you won't. You're going to separate yourself from it. And if we're going to be church of God in 2024, we're going to have to separate ourselves from some things. From some things. Amen. We can't talk like the world. We don't dress like the world. We don't respond like the world. Amen. Amen. We don't have the same attitude that the world has. Amen. Come on. Amen. We conduct ourselves in an entirely different manner. Amen. You will have a separation from the world if you're going to be saved. Yes. And there, listen, God is going to see what you want. God's going to bring every one of us to a place you're going to decide. You're going to decide if you want to just play games and be religious or if you want to be sold out. And sadly, many have chosen to play games. Amen. You know why? Because everybody else is kind of worldly. Everybody else is kind of lukewarm. So as long as I'm not as bad as them, I feel pretty good about where I'm. Brother, listen, the standard's holiness this morning. And whether everyone in this building is living holy or not this morning, the standard does not change. Amen. See, listen, everybody in this congregation can decide, well, it's okay to go there. It's okay to wear that. It's okay to have that in our home or whatever. You, you can all decide that this morning. And it will not change the standard one, one iota. You'll just be lost. You'll just be lost, but it's not changing the standard. Listen, the standard is not up to what you believe. Come on. It's not arbitrary this morning. Some people think things are up to their interpretation. It's not. It's not your interpretation this morning. See, I've heard, I've even sat in someone's home one time. And they basically told me, well, listen. God isn't going to send anybody to hell if they didn't have understanding on something. And better, you better watch this kind of thing. Because that sounds good. All right? On the surface. And listen, we know that no one is ignorantly going to end up in hell. But see, the purpose of this conversation was, amen, I can do this, and I can do that, and I can claim I just don't have the understanding. Uh, God hasn't shown me. Amen. And so I'm okay. That's not so this morning. The Bible actually speaks of those that are willingly ignorant. And brother, there's a lot of willful ignorance around the church of God today. 
Brother, listen, when you stand face to face before God's judgment, start, try to say, well, I didn't understand. He's going to say, you could have. I gave you every opportunity to understand. I tried to show it to you, but you closed your eyes to it. And you're responsible for that this morning. Oh, you're responsible for that this morning. You're responsible for what you could know. Amen. Anyways, I'm listening. Don't, don't get all fearful this morning. Well, God's going to send me to hell over something I don't know. Uh -uh. You better just keep an honest heart before God. God don't send, amen, an honest heart to hell. If you're honest with God, God will pull out all the stops to make sure you have everything you need. He's not going to surprise you with something, brother. But listen, don't bury your head to truth because you love the world. Because you love the world. Because you love the things of the world. See, there's a difference. You're motivated by something this morning. And many people, their ignorance is motivated by a love for the things of the world. The spirit and ways of the world should be foreign Amen. to the people of God. It should be foreign. I know we're not a cult, Lord willing, but there is a culture among God's people. Oh, yes, there is. There's a holy culture. There, is a ho there are some things that don't belong to the culture of the church of God. It just, just it, 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 it doesn't become holiness. It's not edifying. Amen. It's not, it's not, listen, we have to maintain a holy culture. Amen. Listen, if our children don't want to be saved, then let them not be saved. But don't try to lower. Don't try to lower it for them. Don't lower. Listen, let your children, listen, raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, but don't lower the standard on them. This is what holiness is. Amen. And you're going to come to it or you don't have it. Amen. Or you don't have it. Amen. Amen. Listen, we got too many young people today that don't know where they, don't know where they stand. Amen. Because they, they have continued to let the world come in among them, brother. And there's no separation. Amen. And you know what you do with that? You lose the young people. True. You lose them. I, I, the more congregations try to let the world into the church, the more frustrated the young people become because, because, why would I stick around here and try to be somewhat restrained? But I could just go out there and do what I want to do. What's the difference? What's the difference? But there's got to be a difference. There's got to be a line of demarcation. This is holy. This is unholy. This is right and this is wrong. This is black and this is white. There's got to be a difference between the holy and the profane. Yes. And brother, this is going to set you at variance with folks. Yes, it will. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Some people are not going to like you. Yes. Some family members are not going to like you. Yes. Some relatives are not going to like you. Yes. They don't want you at the family reunion. They really... They invited you because they felt compelled to invite you because your blood. But it's better once you leave. We can do what we want to do. Come on. Amen. There are going to be some people that are going to oppose you. Why? Because you're separate. If you were throwing it back with them, if you were talking about the same things they were talking about, if you were drinking the same things they were drinking, if you were involved in the same things they were involved in, they love you. The Bible says that. The Bible says that. They would love you. But, brother, Jesus said they hated me. So guess what, disciples? They're going to hate you, too. They're going to hate you, too. Listen, it's a problem if the world loves you. I'm not talking about just being nice and cordial. We, we understand that this morning. But, brother, their spirit should be an entire in opposition to yours you should be going in two different directions the problem is today the world is trying to get as close to the same direction as the world is going while still uh, having a semblance of holiness and I'm telling you it's never going to work that way Jesus said think not that I am come to send peace on the earth don't, don't think that I've come to send peace you say brother that don't make no sense he said he's the prince of peace said, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But Jesus did what he's saying here. My motivation for coming was not to make everybody happy. Was not to just be at peace with everybody. 
I came to save souls. And not everybody is going to understand that I'm here to save souls. Not everybody's going to like that I'm here to save souls. Why? Because I came to condemn sin. And they love darkness more than light. I can bring peace. I am the Prince of Peace. Anybody that wants deliverance from sin, I'll bring them peace. But if you are trying to abide in sin, if you are trying to live in darkness, you are going to hate me. Think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Amen. For I am come. He lets you know, listen, oh yeah, this loving, merciful Jesus and gentle Jesus. He said, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter, and what's he saying here? Listen, if mama don't want to be saved, if mama loves sin, mama loves the world, and here you are trying to live holy, yeah. and you're here trying to live right, brother, you're probably not going to get along all the time. Yeah. I don't mean you'll be at, you know, mean or rude or nothing like that, but brother, it's just your life is going to put condemnation on mama's life, and brother, mama and daughter's relationship is going to be affected. Yeah. Here is. The father trying to live for God, trying to hold the standard. And the son want to go out and rip and run with the world. Listen, you know the prodigal son had to go out of the house to do what he did. You can do what you want to do, but not here. Why? There was a sword of division. Why? Because some things don't belong in father's house. But thank God he had a father's house to come back to where the standard was still being held, where there was still a holy separation. He didn't come back and find the sin and the flesh and the world. He wanted out of the pig pen. He wanted out of feeding the swine. So he came back to Father's house and found the house still intact. You better hold on for your children. You better hold on for your family. You better stand in the gap. He's got to go. Amen. You better stand in the gap. You are their only hope. Imagine they come back and see you watching the same things they were watching. Amen. Involved in the same things they were involved in. And they want it out. They might look like they're having a good time. They might look like, but brother, when their soul is sick and tired of this old world, brother, may they have a home. To come back to. Church of God, you better hold it. You better hold it. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He, listen to the word of God this morning. I told you it's going to get close to home. He that loveth father or mother more than me. He's not saying go hate your mom and hate your dad. But he's saying, listen, I'm first. I, I, I'm number one. If it comes down to mama or Christ, it's got to be Christ every single time. If it comes down to daddy or following Christ, daddy got to go. Come on, I don't care if it's grandma. Come on, I don't care if she's been the matriarch of the family. What Grandma Betty said, everybody, come on, no, huh? Grandma Betty got to get on the altar. Amen. 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 And people today are more influenced by this than they realize. Amen. They're more influenced by this. Well, my, you know how many people won't stand because Auntie didn't stand? Amen. You know how many won't, will go along with wrong, will go along with compromise, they'll go along with apostasy? Because grandma or mama or cousin or uncle or aunt, brother, it's a shame today. People say, I'm following Christ. I'm following Christ. No, you're not. You are following a man. Just, and that's just as much man rule as anything else this morning. Listen, there's more man rule than just in religious systems, than just down in false churches. People are ruling themselves this morning, and that's man rule. Their family rules them. Mama rules them. Daddy rules Brother, we still only have one captain this morning, and we owe our allegiance to Jesus Christ and him alone. Praise God. And he that loveth son or daughter, get your children on the altar. Come on, we love our children. We care deeply for our children. 
But brother, the love for Christ got to go deeper. Son or daughter, more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. Let's just keep plowing a little deeper this morning. There has to be a holy separation. Brother, there was an old, an old, old brother back in the 60s. He said the church needs to break this unholy alliance with Satan. This unholy alliance with the world. And I say that message is relevant today. The church needs to break this whole unholy alliance that they have with the world. Brother, we are not of the world. This world's going to burn. And make sure you don't burn with it. Amen. Acts 19, verse number 18. And many that believed came. Now listen, when the scripture says in Acts, many believed, it's not talking about what they say today down in nominal religion where they have like all these people get weepy and this emotional feeling sweep over them. And Amen. Everybody say you believe in Jesus. If you raise your hand, then you're now a believer. It, not, it didn't work that way in the book of Acts, brother. When, when you said you believed in Jesus, you mean the one a few years ago that we saw up on the cross, crucified, you believe in him? Yes, I believe he rose from the dead. You were marked. You didn't just go around and say that lightly. Brother, that, that affected your entire life. That changed your livelihood. That changed how you were viewed in, the society, in society. That changed how you were viewed in social service. Brother, when you said you believed in Jesus Christ, your living was, all, uh, was entirely affected. Amen. Wow. Amen. Today, many people say they believe in Jesus, but nothing changes in their living. Yes. Nothing changes in their living. Brother, when you really believe in Jesus Christ, it'll change how you live. Amen. It'll change who you are. Yes. And many that believed came. And confessed and showed their deeds. They came clean. These are some people that got saved. They came correct. Amen. They weren't holding anything back. This is what I did. I'm, saying, I'm not saved. Oh, so more religious people today would just come to the conclusion they're not saved. Why? They're still sinning. If you're still sinning this morning, you're not saved. Amen. I didn't say you never sin, but if you're still sinning this morning, you're not saved. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. But thanks be to God this morning. Amen. He delivers from sin and he keeps from sin. Amen. And if you're in sin this morning, you're not saved. Amen. That's basic Bible 101 today. Many people missed the mark already right there. Acts 19 verse 19. Many of them also which used curious arts uh, brought their books together and burned them. Brothers, we, brother, listen, there's some Church of God places, they need a bonfire, brother. They, brother, brother, we just need to forget, can't, forget, just cancel your annual camp meeting. Forget that re third revival this year. Amen. Go down somewhere, find you a nice big fire pit. Get some gasoline and some matches. Amen. And let's have a real revival. Amen. Brother, some people need to bring their movies. Amen. That little collection they have. Come on. They need to bring their music. Come on. Oh, I'm still preaching, Church of God. I'm talking about curious art. You know, this used to not be controversial. In Church of God pulpits. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard at Church of God camp meetings preach against the world today? Why, why, why are some things in, if the evangelist comes to town, that's pastoral. That's pastoral, evangelist. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Brother, that ain't Zion. Because you ain't saved. Because you know what? When you get saved, there's some things that you don't need no more. There's some things that used to entertain you. You don't find that's, that's not entertaining to me anymore. There's some things I used to listen to. Now it's not edifying. So I don't have any use for it. Oh, pitch it. Burn it up, my God. Put it in the fire. I don't need it anymore. 
There's things that used to appeal to me, but they should lose their appeal if you really get saved. Amen. Amen. You know why some people, they don't want Brother Nathan coming. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're going to get, listen, you're going to have more, I'm going to have more trouble in my congregation when you leave than when you came. Why? Because half my congregation is watching this. Come on. And the preacher won't put no judgment on it today. <laughs> Brother, how are you going to watch the same things the world watch? Go to the same place the world goes. Entertain yourself the same way the world entertains yourself and say you're a Christian this morning. Friendship with, if you're a friend of the world, the Bible tells me what you are this morning. You're the enemy of God. I'm saying we've got to break this unholy, unholy alliance with the world. And now listen, I listen, this stuff gets in so easily. It can, be, it, can be, it can look so harmless and so innocent. And may the Holy Ghost, may he find you tender enough to be able to check you this morning and you make some adjustments. Come on, well, it's, it's just Cinderella and it's just this and it's just that. Well, listen, 10 years later, it's not just anything. You know what? Listen to me. Let me, let me give you a little warning this morning. You can justify whatever you want to justify. And make yourself feel at peace about it. Yes, you can. And people have done it. And they'll let you know, my conscience doesn't bother me, Brother Nathan. Your conscience is not a good barometer this morning. Because <laughs> I've seen people do things that their conscience never bothered them about, but the Bible completely forbids. <laughs> Oh, well, it doesn't bother my conscience. Not everything's up to your conscience this morning. Amen. If it violates the word of God, it's wrong. Whether you feel bad about it or not. You know, Paul went around killing saints. And he felt great about it. Even the Old Testament said, thou shalt not murder. But he found a way to justify himself. Because they were heretics. They were blasphemers. In his mind, and he never felt one bit convicted about it until, until God got a hold of his heart one day when Stephen was being stoned. But he said in one place, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was doing the right thing. I was wasting the church of God. I was destroying this thing. Why? Because I thought I was right. And you can make yourself believe that you're right this morning. And people are doing it. And people are doing it. And all the while... They're losing their distinctiveness from the world. I'm not talking about being weird this morning. You don't need to be a weirdo to be saved. But you do have to be different. Amen. And some people might think you're weird. And that's okay. But they better make sure you know I'm, trying to, I'm keeping my garments unspotted from the world. All right, well, we brought their books together and burned them. They had books back then. We got more than books today. Those two, some people need to go through their library. Some people need to go through their audio books. Come on. Some people need to find the delete button. And then they need to go into albums deleted and permanently delete them. Amen. And burn them quietly. Burn them privately. Uh-uh. Before, uh, listen, I'm taking a public stand here. Listen, I did have that in my home. <laughs> but guess what, Saints? Go ahead, brother. Throw that in. The, see, see, look at that. That's going in the fire. You ain't going to find it in my house no more. Come on over. I don't got to put it in the... I, I don't got to put it in the closet real quick. I ain't got to hide this. Yeah. Don't go in that room. Right. Come on, saints of God. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that would be today. Somebody can look that up. It meant 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily, what happened? So mightily grew the word of God. It had an impact. So might, oh, I want to see souls saved and I want to see revival. Then get out from the world. Separate yourself from the world. 
so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It had an impact. It had an impact. Amen. The world has use for things that God's people have no use for. But I'm not saying everything. I know you got to go to. I, I know you got to go to the store and buy some food, and I know you got to put gas in your car. So does the sinner. I know that this morning. So you need oil and you need gas and you need groceries just like every other man. But brother, there's some things the world has use for that the saint of God has no use for. Amen. 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 I remember I was talking to a. I heard a preacher preach one time. He was dealing with the worldliness in the church and the entertainment and the movies and this, that, and the other. And he said he was at, that's back when they used to have a, they might still have it now, but you, at the store they have a whole selection of movies that you could rent. It wasn't Blockbuster, but you go down to Kroger or whatever, Albertsons, whatever, they have it there. He said, you know, he thought, he went over there one day. And he said, as a saint, out of all this selection here, what would I watch? As a saint, as a representative of Jesus Christ, what would I watch here? He said, I couldn't find one thing that as a saint of God I would watch. Amen. See, it's not even so much the content either. It's a, it's a lot the content. I'm not taken away from that this morning. But it is a time waster. It does not bring one closer to God. There are things that draw away from God. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I've preached it before. There's some things that are edifying. They're absolutely edifying. Reading your Bible, praying, witnessing, amen, fellowshipping with the brethren. Those are edifying things. Listening to a message, reading a spiritual book. Those are edifying. There are some things that are just unedifying. All right? They, 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 they take away. They drain spirituality. And then there's some things that are neither. They're not, it's not edifying to put a ball in a hoop. It's, it's not really unedifying to put a ball in a hoop. All right? It's not unedifying to go hunting. It's not necessarily edifying. It could be, you know, you go out there and meditate for a while because you ain't got nothing coming you anyways. But uh, it could be edifying, but it's, it's really, for the most part, it's, it falls in that neither. It can become unedifying. Come on. It can become unedifying if I'm overcharged, giving myself over, not temperate, not moderate. Yeah. Amen. Saints of God, you got to learn how to you got to learn how to negotiate these things. Yeah. See, so many people today, and they actually do want this. They want the preacher to codify some things. They want him to say, "Do this, do this, do this. Don't do this. Don't." That's not going to happen here. You are going to have to navigate through some of this world with the principles of the Word of God. That word, let's talk about that word, curious arts, real quick. There's a number of definitions for it. It's not just artwork. All right, it's not even talking just about magic. Some people have said, well, let's just talk about sorcery. Nah, well, listen, Disney's about that anyways, but listen, uh, it's not just about that. It's busy about trifles and neglectful of important matters. Involving yourself in this entertainment cause it's, 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 it's of no value, it's trifling, and it causes you to neglect important things. Especially busy about other folks' affairs. Do people know everything LeBron's doing? They know what this actor's doing with Tom Cruise and all, Brad Pitt and the, all these, and I'm dating myself a little bit here, but listen. Uh, <laughs> Because I, I, yeah, Beyonce and they know all about this stuff. Drake and Amen. They got rapper names that I couldn't even remember. Just pick a letter of the alphabet and put Lil in front of it, and you. <laughs> but they know all about this stuff, brother. They know all about. They're busy in everybody else's affairs, <laughs> while their affairs are all out of sorts. Brother, your, your life's a mess, but you know about everybody else's life. Get away from the curious arts. Amen. Oh, Lord. Four or five million dollars put, put in the fire. Why? Right, listen, it's going to cost you some things. There are some things you must put away because it's of no use to you. Listen. 
There are environments we do not belong. I said that, and I'm going to say that again. There are some atmospheres, environments, the saint of God should be nowhere near. Amen. Not a saint. Amen. Well, I'm going to go witness to them down there. Uh-huh. Because that's what they went down there for, was to hear you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and how he can save. Yeah. Let me know how that goes for you. Listen. There's some places your co-workers are going to go on Friday night. You're not going. You not not as a saint of God. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh-uh. You know why? Amen. Because you don't belong down there as a saint of God. Amen. I had a job and I, I, I enjoyed working with these co-workers. I enjoyed them. It was a good time at work. But every year they had an annual party. I didn't belong there. They didn't ask me why I wasn't going. They knew why. It would have ruined my testimony to be down there with them. Somebody asked that didn't know me real well. Are you going? And they said, oh, someone, another coworker. Oh, not Nathan. Mm -mm. He won't be down there. Thank you. appreciate that. No, I won't. Why? You know, some people would be disappointed. I'm talking about sinners. Would be disappointed if they found out. That you were just throwing it back with the boys. Yep. That you were there. Yeah. That you were around that type of conversation. Yeah. They would be disappointed in you. They would lose. They might not even say nothing to you, but they'd lose respect for you. They'd lose respect for you. And sad to say, there's many in the world that have lost respect. They've lost respect for people because they turned out to be just like them. There are environments we do not belong. There are words we do not use. Better be careful with this slang. Yeah. I know people don't like the preaching along these lines. That's okay. I'm preaching anyways. You don't, it's not about whether you like it or not. Yeah. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Yeah. Every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Yeah. The tongue is like a fire. Yeah. It's tough to control. Yeah. There's some things that don't belong in the vocabulary of a saint of God. Yeah. You better watch euphemisms. No, you won't say the actual curse word. But you'll use a substitute. You'll use a substitute. Brother, it's the same thing. Brother, people talking to you can't tell if you are someone just off the streets and just talking to someone off a teeth. Brother, listen, a saint of God, their vocabulary should reflect a Christian vocabulary. Amen anyways. Amen. There's some apparel we do not wear. Amen. Well, they make women's pants. Yeah, do they make men's dresses? Because what you're going to do then? You put, a little, put a dress on your little boy then. When the, when the, world, when the world comes out with men's dresses, boys' dresses, you're going to put your little boy in a dress? Is that what you're going to do? Oh. Come on. They make this. They, the world does not dictate to the church. Amen. We don't take it off society. Amen. And people want to get all philosophical about, well, they had robes. Was there a men's robe and was there a woman's robe? I don't know, but I know this. There are some garments that pertain to a man and there are some garments that pertain to a woman. And in the society and time we're living in, when we got gender confusion, homosexuality on the loose, but we should not be trying to figure out if it's a male or a female. And I've never seen people who have, been able, who have marred these lines and prospered. Never seen it. Amen. Not one time have I ever seen it, brother. Amen. I've never seen one person compromise along these lines. And they're in good shape today, spiritually. They're not. They're a wreck. They're a wreck. Their families are a wreck. Their families are a wreck. You know why? Because there's... A, no, no, no. Wearing a skirt doesn't make you saved this morning. I never said that. But brother, if you're saved, you're going to be separate. People are trying to be saved and hang on to the world. And I'm preaching to you by the word of God. Never going to work. 
Second Corinthians 6, please. I don't know how long I've been going. I don't have my timer up here, so. Lunch will wait today. I got, I got a little more time. Second Corinthians 6. And listen, these things got to be dealt with because it's going silent in many pulpits today. I'm not talking about ignorance this morning. I'm not talking about something you don't understand this morning. Listen, when the Spirit of God shows you something, it's not optional. You can say you don't understand, but the Spirit knows if you understood or not. You can, you can, you can, you can try to, amen, uh, manipulate the Scripture and try to twist this and twist that, but God knows what He meant and He knows what you know. And He's going to judge you for it, too. All right, let's go a little deeper. 2 Corinthians 6. Let's keep plowing. Let's keep plowing a little bit this morning. Amen. Be ye not, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be ye not unequally yoked together. Amen. He's not talking about marriage here. Don't, don't go think you can marry an unbeliever, but that's, that's, not, that's not the context here. That's not what he's talking about. We always, well, do you can't marry someone out in the world because the scripture says don't be unequally yoked. That's not what this scripture is dealing with. I wouldn't recommend marrying someone that's not saved, but they may, we can't use this scripture for that necessarily. Amen. Let's put it in context this morning. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. There's a difference between interacting with young unbelievers and being yoked with unbelievers. There's a world of difference this morning. There's a world of difference between living in the world and being of the world. There's a world of difference. Amen. From having to engage in the world and being in bondage under the yoke of the world. Saints, we are not under the yoke of the world. For what fellowship? Listen, you know what? This, this is a beautiful scripture here. You know what fellowship is? Like spirits coming together. Like spirits. That's what fellowship actually is biblically. It's when like spirits come together. He says, for what fellowship? Hath righteousness with unrighteousness. And what communion hath light with darkness? Amen. The obvious answer to these questions is it doesn't. There is no fellowship with righteousness and unrighteousness. They are diametrically opposed. They are opposite of one another. They go against one another. What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Act like it. Live like it. Conduct yourself like it. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Here it is, the come out message again. Wherefore, come out from among them. The word of God is replete. <laughs> Amen with the message. Come out. You got to come out of sin. You got to come out the world. You got to come out of false religion. You got to come out the church of God battling, brother. You got to come out. Amen. Come out from among them and what? Be ye separate. Come out and be completely separate from anything like that, brother. I'm over here. That's over there. My spirit does not connect with anything over here. My spirit does not resonate. In fact, it's antagonistic. It's opposite. It's vexed. The Bible says the, uh, that Sodom vexed the righteous soul of Lot every single day. He was vexed with that unrighteousness. You should be vexed by unrighteousness. It should bother you. Come on. Touch not the unclean thing. There's some things you don't even touch. If it's unclean, you're not involved in it. Conversation, action, or anything, brother, if it's unclean, don't touch it. There's some things you can't touch and be saved. And they... Uh, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. There should be no agreement, no align alignment, no concord, no connection. Because the things of Christ and the things of the devil do not mix. When you are God's people, you are saying that the places you go, the things you endorse, 
the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you look at people, your attitude, the way you entertain yourself, the way you treat people, the way you interact in the world is how God himself would. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying when you're saying you're a Christian this morning. You're saying how you live your life is how Christ would live his life in this world. I'm a representative. Why? Why, why is that the case? Lord. Well, you're the temple of the living God, and he's supposed to be dwelling Amen. in you. So how you conduct yourself, you're saying that's how God would conduct himself. Yes, Come on. Amen. Come on. I will go over there. I'm not going to because I'm going to close in Ephesians 5. But 1 Peter 2 talks about you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, what? Yes. A holy nation, a peculiar or special or distinct people. A special people. God wants a people that are only his. He does not want to compete with the world or the things of the world. He's not interested. He's not going to try to rival the world for your affections. He wants all your affections. He wants all your love. He wants all your heart. He wants your whole life. You know why? You owe it to him this morning. You're in debt. You're not your own. If you're not your own, then how much say over you do you have? None. Amen. When you got saved, amen, ownership was given over to Jesus Christ. He rules your vessel. You know why? Because you made a wreck of it. We all did. Look, one thing we know for sure is that a man cannot direct his own steps. It is not even within him. To chart his own course, brother, it's just a mess. It's a mess. So what'd you do? Say, look, I don't want to do this no more. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to conduct my life. I don't know what I don't know how to do this. So I give my life over to God and say, I'm yours. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. And where you don't want me to go, guess what? You won't find me there. Amen. Why? You say, why won't you go there, owner? You got to talk to the owner. You got to talk to the owner of my soul. Because he, he forbids it. You, you do what you want to do, but I, listen, I got I, listen, I to gotta, I gotta take orders. Amen. Amen. I'm not my own. I'm not in control. It's, it's really, honestly, it's not even my decision. In a sense, this is God's decision. He doesn't want me to be involved in that. He doesn't want me to be a part of that. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5, let's close. I want to read a few verses here, and I'll let you go. Verse 1, be ye therefore followers of God. As dear. That, that's the mindset you need to have. I'm just a child. I'm just a child following the Father. Listen, the child doesn't make its own decisions. Right? Your child doesn't just do whatever they want to do. They obey, they follow the parents. If God's our Father and we're His children... We got to do whatever he says. And his commandments are not grievous. They're in our best interest. Sometimes we're going to get a little spanking. Yes, and you were out of line. Uh-uh. You're going to get chastised. The Bible says you're going to get chastised sometimes. The Bible says we had fathers who chastised us, got the rod of correction out, and, and, and helped us with the board of education. And sometimes the Holy Ghost, you're going to get the paddle out and say, uh-uh. That was out of line. You know why? It's for your good. You needed that. You needed it. You needed that correction. And if you'll humble yourself, you'll grow by it. Amen. It's a blessing when the Father says you're doing a good job. Oh, man, what it does. What it does for the soul. Amen. It encourages, uplift to get a witness from God that you're my child. Hey, man, listen, the devil bull bullying you, beating you up, and here comes daddy. Hey, get off of him. Amen. Listen, I'm glad we have a heavenly father this morning. I want to stay. I want to stay within his good graces. Amen. I appreciate the protection, the provision, the guidance, the insight, the correction from father. Amen. Just let me be a dear child. Amen. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Yeah. All right. But fornication. 
There's some things you can't be a part of. But fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once. There should be some things that are so far from us, Church of God. It should not be named among us one time. You know some of this stuff that we just read, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, it's so common today. And it shouldn't even be named among us. Listen. Ending up pregnant and somebody, oh, we just, you know, we just ended up in bed together. And I mean, I, one thing led to, not among the church of God. Not among the people of God. Not among the church of God, young people. And it's going on today. How many are coming to the altar? I'm talking about raised in the church of God. I mean raised in the church of God. Not pure. Pastors' daughters. Ministers' daughters. Underage. Messing around. During camp meetings. Sneaking off, going here, going there. I'm telling you, a standard hasn't been raised up. Teach your children that fornication should not be named among us one time. We're not, we're not teaching uh, just uh, birth control. We're not teaching be, be safe. Be careful. We're teaching, let it not be named among us one time. Yeah. Yeah. That thing's a reproach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still a reproach. Yeah. He also said uncleanness. He also said covetousness. Yeah. Saints should not have any issue with covetousness. Yeah. Should not be that we're clamoring. Yeah. Right. That we're wanting what the other person has. That were jealousy and envy working among us. Brothers shouldn't be named among us as saints of God. Not one time. Striving, jealousy, envy, going after. Brothers shouldn't be named among us one time. Neither filthiness. He didn't stop there. There's some other things that should not, because neither is adding on to the previous thought. So fornication, uncleanness, and covetousness should not be named among us one time. Neither filthiness. Amen. Nor foolish talking. Oh, Lord. Amen. And I'm seeing this creep into the church too today. And I'm going to nail this down. I'm going to tell you exactly what this verse is talking about. Yes. Nor jesting. Yes. Which are not convenient. It's not conducive, but rather giving things, filthiness, that foolish talking, jesting, foolish talking, ridiculing someone. Study the commentaries. What he's talking about, the definition is when you're ridiculing someone, making them an object, object of contempt. Making them an object. What, what you're saying about them is causing this person over here to now feel a certain type of way about the person you're talking about. Foolish talking. Why is it foolish? Never needed to be said. It didn't need to be talked about. It didn't need to be discussed. Listen, there are some things that we can discuss, some things that transpire, whatever. But, brother, you better be careful what your motive is. Because you're trying to, maybe you're trying to shape. I tell Brother Neil something about Brother Eric. Because I want Brother Neil to now, I need him to feel a certain type of way about him. And so I say something that he didn't even need to know about Brother Eric. Just because you know something does not mean it needs to be said. Some people need to learn to shut their mouth. Brother, listen, you better be careful with this kind of thing because you're going to stand in the judgment for it. 
You, t you said this about this person. Why did you say it? Why did you say it? Why? 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 Did it need to be said? Did it even need to be addressed? Study to be quiet. To work with your own hands. Listen, you got enough on your plate. You've got children that need to be saved. Amen. You've got a house to take care of. You've got children to rear up. Brother, there's some things you need to just be quiet about and focus, amen, on the things that you do know about, amen, that are needful. Because what you're going to do is teach your children to look at this saint that way. and Because they heard you foolishly talking. There's some things that never need to be discussed in front of your children, especially when it's about the saints. Don't discuss it in front of your children. Don't discuss church problems in front of your children. There's a difference when your children see something going on and they should have an open door to come talk to mommy and daddy. That's fine. But they don't need to know about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so and I didn't like the message this morning and I disagreed with a, this point and that point and that point. Amen. Foolish talk. Amen. Preach your word, brother. Preach your word, brother. Preach your word. Jesting. Jesting. Words that are turned into other meanings. Uh -huh. And the world's full of this today. Yeah. You say something innocently today. Yeah. And everybody start giggling. Yeah. And you know, I mean, they act like you're slow. You know exactly what they're giggling about. It's just like, bro, are we, are we this immature? Yeah. We're this immature. But you know what the sad thing is? It's creeping in right around the church. Yeah. It's creeping in right around the church. Innuendos. Innuendos. Sexual innuendos. It doesn't belong to the saints of God. Get it off your lips. Amen. There's some things that are not to be talked about. There's some things that are private. There are some things that are between husband and wife. Amen. And say, Brother Nathan, you're preaching a mighty conservative gospel this morning. I'm preaching about jesting, foolish talking, filthiness. Amen. Ephesians 5, read it. Amen. Conveying an unclean or obscene or offensive meaning that doesn't belong to the saints. Amen. Oh, I'm still preaching about being a holy people, a separate people. A holy separation this morning. Oh, I don't wear this and I don't go. Okay, how's your conversation this morning? May the Holy Ghost find us this morning. For this ye know that no whoremonger. Listen, if you do not have to actually murder someone to be a murderer, what do you have to do to be a whoremonger? Do you have to go and actually commit the physical act to be a whoremonger this morning? No, you don't. What was Jesus teaching? It starts in the heart. Well, some people feel, well, I didn't go do the act, so I'm clear. No, you're not. Your heart's not clear with God. Pornography, it's still a sin tonight, this morning. I know, I know. This brother, listen, this brother, it's getting mighty tight. And that shouldn't even be. That's basic, right? That's basic. That's basic. But you'd be surprised. Let me just call it out this morning. You'd be surprised how many people professing the name of Christ are in bondage to that type of thing. You'd be surprised how many young people are in bondage to that type of thing. Over the last couple decades, I've talked to ministers. and They said, I have dealt with that more than any other sin. Not them personally, but with people. And, and, and it's taken out some ministers too. But brother, it's been that sin. It's the great one. It's the great one. Why? It's on the lips. It's on the vocabulary. It's on the mind. It's in the heart. It's everywhere today. And some people can't break free from it. Nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, don't be deceived, because of these things cometh the wrath of God 
upon the children of disobedience. So what do he say? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Them. Amen. Them. That implies they're over there, you're over here. There's a separation. You don't partake with them. There is a them. And you're not with them. Amen. Amen. There's some discrimination. No, yes, there is. Listen, listen, the church of God is not like, a, you know, all diverse and, you know, we just, you know, all this tolerance. And then no, there's some things that we discriminate against. We discriminate against the world. Amen. We're exclusive. Yes. yes, anybody can come. Whosoever will. Whosoever will. But they got to be saved. Yeah. They got to get saved. They can't come and stay as they are. Amen. Ah, this is not a come and stay as you are gospel. This is a come and be, repent. Change. Yeah. Amen. You know, I've preached it before. The place where there is absolute diversity, that everybody's welcomed, is hell. Amen. I preached the message one time. The diversity of hell. The diversity of hell. That's where it'll take you. It don't matter if you're gay, you're transgender. It doesn't matter if you're a thief, a liar, a stealer, whatever, murderer. It'll take you all. Come as you are. And brother, it's sad to say, many people are in a, a hell on earth because they want to open themselves up to all these things that are not of God. Let's try to finish this out. I'm, I'm about through. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are ye light in the Lord. Walk, walk, conduct yourself as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness. This is how I know if you have the Spirit or not. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Proving. There's some things you've got to prove because there's some things that may not be as clear if it's, if it's right or wrong right away. Prove it. Prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. Have no fellowship, none, with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, because you're walking in light, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Amen. Well, it was just the boys. Well, it was just us girls. Well, it was just our family. You know there's some topics that are off limits. Amen. You don't talk about it. There's some things that no, there's no value. There is no edification whatsoever in talking about that. There's some things that you don't even need to know about. Amen. We don't even look into it. We don't. You don't know what that is? No. And I'm not interested. Because I can already tell this is something is wicked. It, it, uh, listen, I, I, don't need to, I don't need to go and figure out what are they talking about? Tell me more. No, nah, listen, there's some things it's a shame to even talk about. It's a shame to even talk about. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For, who's, or for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. One of my favorite verses. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What does walking circumspectly mean? Carefully. Cautiously. We don't just rip and run and get involved in this and try that and watch this and go here. No, listen, there's some things I need to prove first. There, there may be nothing wrong with our family going there, but let me check into it a little bit first before we just buy tickets and find ourselves in a situation that's not becoming. And listen, sometimes you might do something rashly, and guess what? You're going to have to eat the loss. We shouldn't have bought that. We shouldn't have gone there. We shouldn't have done that. You better learn. Because you've got to walk circumspectly. Walk carefully, cautiously. Some people feel like if it's questionable, they can do it. If it's questionable, then, then you can't say it's wrong. So let me just do it. I feel the saints should have the opposite attitude. Amen. If it's questionable, let me hold off. Amen. Let me hold off. You know what? I can't say it's right or it's wrong. I can't really make a judgment call. But I'd rather err on the side of circumspect. I'd rather err on the side of caution and, you know, miss out on something that maybe I could have enjoyed. I'd rather just miss out because it's not of that great of value to me. What I value more is walking in the light of God. Amen. And there in Ezra, the next chapter, it said to them, 
Yet now, there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. He said, look, it's not hopeless. Yes, you've messed up. you got these strange wives and these foreign influences come in. But I want to help you this morning. There's some hope in Israel. Now look, there's some things they had to do and it was hard. They had to separate themselves from those wives. And they had to separate themselves from those children. You say, Brother Nathan, that seems so incredibly harsh. That seems almost unjust. It seems unfair. Well, first of all, if you study it, they were taken care of. They just couldn't be married to them anymore. Those children and those wives, they were taken care of by society, but they couldn't be married to them anymore. They had to be a, what that should show us this morning, is what, the, what this should indicate to us is how much God cares about having a separate people. How much he cares about having a holy and distinct people. And it will cost you some hard things. There's some things you're going to have to put away. There's some things you're going to have to separate yourself from if you're going to be God's people. Have some things come into your life that shouldn't be there this morning. Are there some things in your home that shouldn't be there this morning? Are there some people that shouldn't be holding the influence over your life? Well, they're my relative. Well, maybe there needs to be some separation. I'm not talking about forever, but maybe there needs to be a pulling back. There needs to be some adjustments that are made. Are you having more influence over them or are they having more influence over you? These are the decisions that God wants to help us make this morning to help us draw us closer to himself. Shall we stand? Anybody like to pray this morning? The altar is open. Piano player may come. What are we singing? Page 81. The altar is here this morning. Will you come? You need to pray. Get some things right. Get some things adjusted. God will help you this morning. like to pray this morning. You may come. like to pray. You may come. Can you say that this morning? Can you say that this morning? That this world has no charms for me. Can you say that with a clear conscience this morning?
like to pray this morning. Or something on the part of the battery. I like it. 